Okay, let's dip our toes a little deeper into CDAS by actually looking at some data. We use this uh, open file button on the toolbar, click that, and we're presented with a standard file browsing uh, window. Um, this happens to be my data directory where I've downloaded a few files. I'm going to open this ocean color file. So these NC files are directly openable, can be directly opened by, by CDAS. So I open that. Now the only thing that really changes in the user interface is the file manager contents now reveal that a file is uh, open. Um, showing the full name here. It's an aqua file from 2020, the year. 020 is the Julian day or the 20th of January and 1910 uh, with 00 for seconds is the uh, Greenwich Mean Time or UTC time. Um, it treats, now this file manager is not a browser of your files on your computer, but it's sort of a browser of the contents of a data file so that a lot of the uh, GUI elements kind of behave similarly um, where you turn down a, this, uh, this triangle on this folder to reveal its contents. So it's sort of in a list mode of the contents of this file. So there's metadata, there are flag bits uh, we're not going to be concerned with at the moment. And then there are rasters. Rasters is the important one because this is where you find all of the bands of data that have been processed into this ocean color file. For example, a chlorophyll A file, a uh, remote sensing reflectance <clears throat> bands, excuse me, one for each of the channels of the satellite. One other GUI element that's changed by opening uh, data is uh, this global map which shows the region of the earth that this data is georeferenced to. Okay, a um, few of these other uh, toolbar buttons have now become enabled because there's data available but let's not worry about that. Let's actually look at some data. I'm going to open this chlorophyll A by double clicking the channel here and then it presents a window. So it's a tabbed window, so this region is sort of like a browser. If I open a, another band, say the 645 uh, remote sensing reflectance band, I get a second window and I can switch between them, okay? Focusing for now just on the chlorophyll A, I can, um, uh, well, let's let's review some more of the GUI elements. A lot of my tools are now enabled for doing various things. The default tool that's in use is the hand tool or pan tool. If you could see that text under there, it's the pan uh, tool. Okay, that means that if I click and drag, I'm panning in the image area. Okay, I'm I'm moving. Uh, up, down, left, right in the scene that's being portrayed in the window. I have similarly a zoom tool that I can click there. I can draw out a zoom box and uh, let go and it zooms in on that region. But a much better way to navigate the image and zero in on the area of interest is to always stay on the panning tool and simply use your mouse or trackpad to navigate. Since I can click and drag, I can center an area of interest. Then I just scroll, use the scroll function of my mouse or trackpad. So if you have a scroll wheel on your mouse, or you have a two finger control, <clears throat> or some other combination of controls that allow you to uh, scroll, um, for example, up and down in your browser page, you would simply use that to zoom in and out. <clears throat> Excuse me, so, so um, you can quickly navigate to specific regions of the image and then click, drag, move around, uh, scroll in and out to zoom in and out, okay? So it's very easy to navigate around in the image. Notice that as I'm doing all this, this lower right corner, 
is uh, reflecting what I'm doing. So these are the navigation controls offered in a separate window. You can click and do a single step zoom in or zoom out. You can <clears throat> also do functions uh, here to uh, fix the zoom or to fit all the data in the window. Okay, those are just standard sort of zoom functions. All right, you can actually rotate the scene and do other things I'm not going to really be concerned with. But uh, the one I want to focus on is simply click and drag and then scroll, use your scrolling function to zoom in and out. All right, now notice also in the uh, uh, panel over here on the right that as I move the cursor around, those numbers are changing. Okay, and so you have geolocation information that reflects the pixel location in the array of data values, the row and column effectively in the uh, X and Y, or really the Y and X. Uh, you have longitude and latitude expressed in degrees, minutes, and seconds. You also have in this raster area the the actual data value below the cursor. So whatever pixel I happen to be uh, pointing at is reflected in that data value with the longitude and latitude in floating degrees of uh, um, in, in that area. Okay, and so that's, uh, you know, the very easy um, sort of open data file, navigate around, look at it, and uh, Again, familiarizing ourselves with the elements of the GUI that are presented. Okay, um, I'll call it quits on this, and we'll look at some data again in the next video.